Hi guys, today I'm going to be making some semi-modular castle ruins for various systems. And to start with, just tracing out the rough outline onto some foam core. And mainly marking out the doorways, the staircase, and where the edge of the piece will be. Then cutting it out and beveling the edges just to get rid of the hard line on the top of the foam core. And then to add some modularity, I'm going to cut the entire piece in two. This is similar to how I assembled the house in one of my earlier videos, and it makes it a bit easier to paint the insides and get various configurations, so you can kind of see the effect there. Next up, going to need some brickwork, so with some styrofoam and a sharp knife, just going to be cutting several strips of that, which I can then carve into large bricks for the foundation layers. And using oversized bricks for the kind of bottom one to two layers, and then moving to a smaller brick on top of those and using a tin foil ball to rub some stone texture onto them. And this can be a bit of a tedious process but the size of the bricks really makes a big difference on how quickly you can build something. So if you don't want to spend ages, make larger bricks but if you want something that's more realistic then you do have to go for smaller ones. And I always like kind of laying the bricks out just so I can make sure the scale of the wall and the sizing looks about right before I glue it on. And then using the base of the tower as the starting point and gluing on top of the pen markings beneath. And then when the larger bricks are down, going in with the smaller bricks on top of that. And then layering that up until it's maybe five or six bricks high, as well as doing some small wall sections sticking out either side. And then building a staircase out of slightly longer styrofoam rectangles. And then just working my way around the curve of the tower. Then to kind of mask off the end pieces and add the platform to put the top stonework on using some more foam core and just making sure that's well glued in with some hot glue. And if you wanted you could put a pillar support or some kind of beams underneath if you wanted a bit more stability, but I find the foam core is usually about fine for this. And also capping off the end piece as well, so we can add some rubble and debris on the end. And for the end pieces, normally just grabbing the offcuts of styrofoam, and then tearing them apart so you get a rough edge on them, then gluing the flat side to the open wall. And this doesn't have to be uniform, and in fact it looks a bit better if it's not. And just glue in the kind of ragged pieces haphazardly across the end. Then, with some underfloor insulation, going in and making some stone tiles for the top of the wall. And again, just pushing a bit of stone texture into them with a tinfoil ball before slicing them up into roughly rectangular shapes. But if you wanted to, cobblestones would look quite interesting up here. And then going in and with some more scrap pieces of styrofoam, just plugging up any of the big gaps in the wall. Then with some more offcuts and some leftover bricks, just going around the base where they've fallen off the top of the wall and being cast asunder. Then to make the wall look a little less blocky, going in with a sharp knife and just gently cutting off any of the pointy edges that are sticking out the side which has the illusion of the wall being shaped with curved bricks. And then you can also use the tinfoil ball to replace any lost texture. Then moving on to the sculptor mod stage, adding some mass to the base of the piece where there's going to be the dirt, as well as using it to seal any of the bigger gaps between the stonework. And this is also a good opportunity to blend the base together and make it look a bit more organic, especially if you use the foam core and you have that harder top edge to it. Then, once the sculptor mold is dried, we're going to go in and add some texture. And again, using my pretty standard basing paste here, so it's a mixture of two types of cork flock, but this time adding some of this kind of fine sawdust granules to it. 
as well as then the black gesso and some PVA to bind it together. And I find the sawdust just helps to bulk it out a bit, and it has the same kind of uh, malleability as the cork granules, so it's still very workable with. And I also added a few drops of water to make it a bit more fluid and malleable. And using that all around the base, just to cover up the sculptor mold and blend it into the earth, as well as putting a bit on the stonework itself, just to make it look more crumbly and very kind of aged. Because I want this to be like a very old ruin, maybe two, three hundred years old. And here's where it pays that it's a bit more fluid, because it's a lot easier to work into the cracks and the crevices of the stonework. And while the mixture is still wet, just taking the opportunity to push a few small pebbles into the base of it. And then giving the entire thing a coat of black gesso. Then mixing up a mid-brown acrylic paint, going in and giving the entire thing a coating of that with the stonework and the base both. Then for the stonework, mixing together a mid grey and giving a fairly solid coating of that over the entire thing. Then, for some variation on the highlighting phase, going in and picking out a few individual bricks and painting them either a darker grey or the same brown again. And this will just help to add a bit of differentiation later when we dry brush. And going in with a light tan colour and giving the entire thing a fairly heavy dry brush. Then, to add some details to the top of the piece, going in with a very, very pale tan and just hitting the top of the brickwork as well as on the sides where you would get some sunlight. And this will just help to pull out the stone texture on the brickwork as well as the edges and make it pop a little bit more. Then, with some acrylic green and heavily watering that down and diluting it into a glaze, going to go in and hit the lower portions of the brickwork. And this will look like a light moss or some kind of growth that you get on brickwork. And you can get a nice effect by varying the density of the dilution so you have some areas more green and some areas very light green. Then with a wooden stirrer, just going in and dabbing some PVA around the base where I'll be applying static grasp. And once again, this is a good opportunity to cover up any of the hard edges showing through from the foam core. Then going in with a static grass applicator and just hitting all the PVA. Then, with some more of the tiny leaves I made a while ago, just going in, crimping them, and gluing them onto the base. And 
And this also adds just a nice bit of contrasting colour and makes it a bit more visually interesting. Grabbing some coarse turf and putting a bit of that in a cup along with some basing flock and some PVA, going to mix that up into a moss mixture to apply onto the walls and the base just to make the impact of some shrubberies or some ivy growing up the sides of the walls. And using less PVA is better here, as you get more of a kind of springy foliage. If you use too much, you get a kind of heavy slime, and that has quite a glossy finish to it as well. But it's ideal if you want to make a swamp. And with a combination of the wooden stick and some sculpting tools, just gently pressing around until it looks nice. And you can also work it into the cracks if you had anywhere where the paint didn't quite get to. And it's a good concealer for any mistakes you made along the way. Then grabbing a variety of tufts. These ones are from Gamers Grass, quite fond of them. And just applying them strategically around the base. And again, great opportunity to cover up any mistakes here or any bits that you don't think look that great. And the nice thing about these tufts is you can use a pair of tweezers and pull the arms out and make it look more like a thorny bush. And with some standard tufts as well. Just going in and plugging in a few gaps, as well as anywhere that could do with being a bit more interesting. And finally, going in with some clump foliage and just putting a few small pieces here and there to add to the mossy buildup, as well as in between a few cracks of the brickwork where you have something growing out from between. Then to tie those together, taking some tenebrous grey from AK Interactive Paints and using two small drops of that, heavily diluting them and using that as a glaze and applying that on the turf and the clump foliage we added. And this will help just to knock the colour back and blend it all in together, as well as get rid of any of the glossiness from the PVA. And once that's dry, we're done. And there we have our overgrown section of ruined castle. I'll probably add a few more bits later. And it's semi-modular, you have a few different layouts you can do with it. You can have a ruined tower or a section of wall. And with a few more pieces, you should have a lot of different layouts. And it's usable in a lot of different game systems. Stuff like Rangers of Shadows Deep or D&D. Anything you want, really. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next week.